Artemisinin is an anti-malarial drug extracted from a plant known as Artemisia annua. The plant is widely grown in Kabale district in southwestern Uganda. According to authorities in the World Health Organization, the plant has strong medicinal properties that can quickly reduce the number of plasmodium parasites in the blood of malaria patients. It's a very robust drug. It's very efficacious in um, knocking out the parasite very quickly. Dr. Caroline Lynch a malariologist from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine who has worked on many malaria control programs in East, Central and Southern Africa says the atomizinin best combinations, ACTs, are partnered with other drugs. The WHO currently recommends five of them. Atomizinin reduces the main parasite load during the first three days of treatment, while the partner drug eliminates the remaining parasites. The issue, however, is that artemisin resistance, not full-blown artemisin resistance, but partial resistance, has begun to emerge in parts of the Asia-Pacific region, in the greater Mekong sub-region. And fears are that if that spreads across to Uganda and to the Exa region. She adds that this could have a negative effect on the gains registered over the years. It is a big worry. Fortunately, so far, we don't have it. And uh, with increasing use of these agents based on proper laboratory diagnosis. We are hoping we will escape the trap we got into with the chloroquine resistance, which was largely driven by self-medication. Professor Yoswa Dambisia, the Director General for the East, Central and Southern Africa Health Community, XAHC, says this still happens. Researchers have been trying to figure out why resistance sits in have come up with some likely causes. It's to do with low transmission, it's normally in low transmission settings, to do with immunity of people in those areas. Um, but also it's to do with uh, treatment, so if there's a lot of treatment of the disease without confirmatory diagnosis, that um, creates pressure and puts pressure on the drug. In the same respect, if there are substandard antimalarial drugs available and people are using that, or if people are taking only a partial dose of high quality drugs, that also um, helps select out the parasites which have resistance because it gets rid of the susceptible parasites and then the, the resistant parasites are able to flourish without any competition. The patient's partial uptake of drugs is quite common with a high quality or substandard drugs. Someone goes to the, a private retailer or, or a health worker and says, you know, I only have so much money, um, so they're, only, they're provided with only a part of that drug. It can also happen in the homestead. Um, if someone gets the whole dose of the drug, the whole treatment regimen, and they go home and they take a couple of tablets or a couple of doses, and then they feel better, they might guard the rest of, or keep, keep safe the rest of the treatment so that um, if someone else in the family gets sick, that they can then be treated with the same drug. And that's a problem. It's the same problem that occurs for anti-microbial anti, um, resistance, but it's, it's a problem for uh, artemisin resistance in particular. The rising cases of migration may pose serious problems to Africans. When we look back at molecular studies that were done when chloroquine resistance emerged and sulfadoxine paramethamine or fanzidar resistance emerged, what seems to have happened is that it emerged in Asia Pacific in the greater Mekong sub-region and then moved across, we think facilitated by migration to um, East Africa and then through to West Africa and on the other side to Latin America. So we think that migration plays a major role in spreading drug resistance. Dr. Lynch says migration is hard to tackle with people moving all the time. This makes it hard to keep tabs on who is being treated if they've got resistant parasites. It's however not yet widespread in the five Southeast Asian countries, including Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam and Thailand. It's in um, certain hot spots that have been identified um, by the health workers in those areas. And those hot spots, they're seeking to try and contain them to make sure it doesn't expand over to this area. The combination of awareness, the combination of vigilance based on guidelines should help us uh, to combat uh, the, the, the epidemic of malaria as it is without getting the problem of artemisinin uh, resistance. But as artemisinin resistance sets in, some researchers are considering to use what they call sleeping drugs like chloroquine. I think there have been some studies looking at whether chloroquine will be effective now that we've given it a, a holiday, as it were. Um, but I think that would be up to WHO to, and their expert um, review committee to, to make the decision about that. In 2011, WHO came up with a global plan for artemisinin resistance containment 
which sets out a high-level plan of attack to protect SETs as an effective treatment for Plasmodium falciparum malaria. Artemisinin resistance for now needs to be contained where it is at all costs. Malaria kills over 600,000 people globally each year, and this figure could rise with the existence of drug-resistant parasites. The disease itself is um, it's fascinating for someone like me as a researcher, but it does have um, a very negative effect, obviously. Um, it, uh, the uncomplicated form of the disease can knock someone out for two to three weeks, so it has a knock-on effect on their productivity and work. Um, severe forms of the disease which you find in lower transmission areas such as the highlands of Uganda and down in Kabale and Rukunjiri, um, they can um, cause uh, malaria mortality. In the just released annual health sector performance report by Uganda's Minister of Health, malaria is still the top cause of morbidity and death in the country despite the interventions in place. Florence Alimba, NTV.